But you said it is possible to release to uh, release a truth and absorb an error. Of course it is, yes. So what might be an example of that? Well, an example of that often happens during a child, our childhood, for example. So, for example, uh, we might have had, with one experience with our, in our childhood that most people have had, is, is where they're two or three years of age and for the very first time in their life they get belted by their parent for doing something. Now, in that moment, there is a deep confusion within the soul of the child. Up until that point in time, the child has only received what you'd call loving responses from its parent. And the child has never had an experience of violence from its parent at that point, not that physical of violence that has created physical pain to their body. And then all of a sudden, the parent has reverted to some kind of physical action that is violent towards the child. That's an assault on the child. Now, the child goes through a deep deal of confusion in that place, right? Because it's never experienced that before. It's, never, it's only ever experienced what, it would, what we would say would be more loving feelings from the parent, right? Now, what happens generally, if that happens once, the child usually goes through a whole set of confusions. If it happens again, and then again, on, a, on a, any subject, the child begins to accept the error Right? and give up the concept that something is wrong. Right? Initially it knows something is wrong because of the pain it's experienced. Right? But after a while it gives up the concept that something is wrong and after a while it even starts to justify, and, I, and, and, and once we become adults ourselves, we often justify the physical punishing violence that has been perpetrated by parents towards us in our childhood. We justify it, saying, oh, I was a bad child or, or whatever. So we've actually come to the point of completely accepting the error by that stage. So it can be a progressive thing. Definitely, yes. A smidgen of truth gets lost, a smidgen of error gets Im imbibed as a result. As a, a bit more truth gets lost, another error imbibed as a result, and so forth and so forth, until such a point in time that the error is like a mountain and the truth is like a molehill. And therefore, the truth doesn't govern our actions anymore. The, error do, the errors govern all of our actions. Now, of course, the same process can happen in reverse. The error can be released a bit, bit at a time and a bit of truth will be absorbed about that particular thing. So, for example, if I was talking about this truth about my parents assaulting me during my childhood by using what we, net, what we call you know, punishing the child through or, or what we call disciplining the child through you know, a violent act. Now, I would argue that there's no such thing as disciplining a child through a violent act in the sense of from, from, from a loving perspective. But we won't arrive at that condition initially, just instantly, because we have all these concepts inside of our soul that it is a, it is a loving act to, for the parent to sometimes restrict the child's actions through violence, right? We believe it because it happened to us <laughs> and it happened to us through a lot of our childhood. So we come to accept that. Now, in terms of releasing that, I would go through, oh, that really hurt that my mum and dad did that. And as an adult, we might process some of that hurt, you know, that we got hit uh, quite frequently sometimes for things. That, and initially, it usually starts by getting, by feeling about the things we got hit about that we didn't deserve. Does that make sense? That we, we knew we didn't do something wrong and they still violently attacked us in some way. After a while, we, so we released that emotion. So now we've released this emotion that we, that we didn't deserve being attacked for things that we didn't do. <laughs> so we released that at least. And now we can accept the truth that nobody deserves to be attacked for things that they didn't do. Right? That we need to make sure of our facts before we go attacking anybody. This may be the subsequent result of that truth entering us. But we still may believe that our parents were loving even though they attacked us at other times when we felt we deserved it. But then we go through another emotion where we realise that we only feel we deserved it because our parents felt we deserved it. So really we, we, we felt we deserved it because they felt we deserved it and it was really some kind of, it was like an emotional blackmail or you could call it almost an emotional programming that caused us to accept that we deserved it. Does that make sense? Then we process through that emotionally. So we release that emotion of, ah, oh, you know, I've just accepted my parents' definition of the world all the time. I've accepted their definition of what's right and what's wrong. And I process through that emotionally. And then I realise I don't have to accept what my parents' view is right and wrong all the time. 
And then I start to realize that a lot of the things my parents said were right is actually, are actually wrong from a, from a perspective of love, right? And so now I've grown a little more in accepting more truth. And then I go through another process after that generally where, where uh, I start realizing, wow, I got punished for all of those things they said were right. And I didn't deserve to be punished. So now I process that emotionally. I release all of that emotion about how forgiving them. You know, I go through the process of forgiveness of them in that process of releasing that emotion. And now I come to terms with the fact that I didn't deserve to be hit ever. Now, once I get to that point, I'll realise that actually when my parents hit me, they were committing a violent assault. Right? And once I hit that point, I'll have a big ball I'll cry about, probably, if I want to release the error of that, that they have actually assaulted me. My parents have assaulted me. In fact, they assaulted me many times during my childhood. And if they had done that to an adult, they'd be in jail, probably. Still in jail for how many times they assaulted me as a child. If they had done that to another adult, they would have got put in jail many times as a result for that particular offence. Then I feel about all that and release all that emotionally and forgive them for that. Does that make sense? And I go through that emotionally. Once I come out of all of that, I am very firm now with the truth. And the truth is, nobody, no matter their, whatever their age, deserves to be assaulted. And that now is a truth that is firmly in my soul. Nobody can shift it. And it doesn't matter how many people attack me and how many people justify their actions through God or through the Bible or through, you know, some other book or, you know, or justify it, I will be immovable. Because all of the error on the subject now has been released and I now know the truth that any form of assault on my person is an unloving act. And that's how it usually happens is this gradual... Flow And so when I say any truth on a particular subject, I'm talking about that, inter, uh, that process, in the process I've just described, for example, which is a, really a subset of the actual process, and you can see that there was a little bit of truth that I had to come to terms with, and then the error could be, uh, the error could be released and I could come to terms with that truth. And, then it, and initially I receive it intellectually, I think about it, think about it, think about it, to the point where I get to releasing the emotion. Once I release the emotion, now the truth can enter me as a solid fact. And that's how, that's how change occurs. That's the principle of absorption. Right. Mm. Would, um, can I use another example? Sure. Like in growing faith um, as you grow towards God yep. um, and you experiment with the laws mm -hmm. and you have an experience where the law of attraction feeds you back something and you're like, oh,